So now we're going to focus on housing associations. So I'm not an expert, but uh, in this case, social housing, housing associations, some are not for profit, so revenue is not an issue. Um, basically, it's probably most suitable to use social media for communications and service rather than marketing. So obviously housing associations are in diverse locations across the UK, so social media is quite good at allowing you to target locally. Um, obviously they're uh, focused on affordable housing, social housing associations, and uh, are range from small to large organisations. So internet proliferation in the UK is 70% of all households. Um, so social networking uses means that most organisations, no matter what the size or demographic they target, are likely to be able to find customers on social media. So, what are the challenges for housing associations? Well, some that, that, some that spring to mind that I would have thought is communications with customers so and customer service. So in relation to social housing and connecting with customers, I would imagine that the challenges of communication on an ongoing basis and customer services, so dealing with queries and complaints. Any others I've missed? There probably are, to be honest. So, let's talk about providing information. I mean, I'm no expert on housing associations, but based on a bit of research, I'm guessing that a lot of the time, a big ask for housing associations is providing people with information. So, info on properties available for social housing tenants in the area, who's eligible for which properties, details of rights for social housing tenants, directing people who need advice on debts related to where they live, dealing with questions and indeed complaints from tenants to do, to do with their properties provided by housing associations. And I'm sure the list goes on. Social networks are primarily communication platforms, so they're perfect for interaction with, you know, interacting with tenants and providing this kind of information. So, social media for social housing. What are the benefits? Firstly, building relationships. It allows other tenants and customers to link up and help each other. Call centres. So interacting with customers on, in, on social media has the potential to reduce call centre volumes. It's another channel for customer service and interaction and it also allows real-time communications with tenants and customers. What are the drawbacks though? And there are certainly some drawbacks. Firstly, a lack of privacy potentially if if tenants are passing information over social networks they might not be comfortable sharing this info um, in a public space secondly complicated queries are probably not best to be answered through social media as issues and information could be confused rather than if they were discussed over the phone because of the short burst nature of social media however social media could be a good first touch point for these queries thirdly Having the expertise available to answer queries could be difficult on social media. Queries and information can be really varied, so immediate response on certain queries might not be possible. Yes, this is true of other channels um, to get the right knowledge and expertise, but a more timely response is a feature more expected from social media. So finally, not necessarily accessible to all that social media well some people may not have internet access other channels are likely to be more accessible but it's really not that less accessible that really any less accessible than email say and uh, I'm sure everyone uh, accepts emails from tenants so reaching new audiences well both Facebook and Twitter have search functions these enable you to search for what people are talking about. On the screen now, there are examples of a real-time search on both Twitter and Facebook for the term social housing. To reach new audiences, you can find people who are talking about this and decide accordingly whether and how to engage them. So, who's talking about social housing? Well, there's conversations going on all over the web. Blogs, Facebook, Twitter, even MySpace. 
tools like Ice Rocket can help you find out what's being talked about as they, as they allow you to search a variety of online sources for chatter, including blogs, the web in general, Twitter, MySpace, news, and everything else. So, let's talk about what's happening with housing associations on social media at the moment. Firstly, let's talk about Facebook. Well, I did a quick, I did a bit of a search and I found 26 non-profit housing association Facebook pages. Um, this was worldwide, a lot of them were for the US it has to be said, um, but many of them have, this is just a screenshot of the search, many of them have not many fans, a lot have less than 20. Um, some are set up and not developed further and no coincidence these are the ones with no fans or very few fans. So let's look at uh, some more in depth then. So this is an example of a success. This is Werry Housing Association. 91 fans but they've got lots of information and contact details, videos, photos encouraging discussion and crucially they've also got a section where people can ask the housing association a question and they're having their questions answered through Facebook. Um, <clears throat> an example of someone not doing so well is Unison Glasgow Housing Association. No fans and the page has just been set up like that and nothing added to it. Moving on we'll talk about housing associations active on Twitter at the moment. So I did a search again and there's well over a hundred housing associations active on Twitter. This is just a screenshot of, of the search, one of the pages of the search. Again, this is worldwide, a lot of the, the housing associations are US based. Um, but most of the UK based ones have over a hundred fans and are reasonably active, certainly more so than on Facebook. As you see there, the UK housing associations have got between 16 and 237 followers. So let's talk about some specific examples. So we've got Hyde Housing. It's the most followed, but only tweets company updates and hasn't actually updated since October 2009 when I when I accessed this a couple of weeks ago. Um, in my opinion, a better example is Gateway Housing. They're active on incidentally they're they're active on both Twitter and Facebook. They've uh, they may, they've got less followers, only 106, but they they have customer advice and information, and they're pretty regularly updated with website links as well. But I have to say, by the looks of it, none of the housing associations in the UK on Twitter actually have a two-way conversation with customers and tenants or invite questions. So that's maybe something to look into. So a few examples there. So what can you do as a housing association? Well, as per the approach as we talked about earlier and taking into account all these specific examples, firstly, research and listen. You need to search for existing or potential customers on the channels, see their location and what they're talking about. You then got to assess this information before you go ahead you've got to make a judgment whether there's a worthwhile audience for you to begin interacting with. If so, develop a presence. If not, don't just do it for the sake of it. Thirdly, begin with Facebook and Twitter as these are probably the easiest to grasp and most appropriate social media channels for housing associations. You can also learn from others. You've got to look at what other housing associations are doing but try to do something more. Finally, Focus on interaction, relationships, and the customer. You've got to interact with people, not just push, in, push information one way. Use social media as another channel for the customer to approach you and question you to aid relationship building. <coughs> so finally, we'll quickly talk about how you measure it. Well, there's a variety of tools available, as we mentioned earlier, um, to monitor what's happening and measure results. Firstly, you've got your own company data. Call centre volumes could drop, email query levels could drop as well. That would show that social media is working. Google Analytics. This is a free tool. You can insert the code into your website and track exactly where traffic is coming from. Radian 6 is a paid for tool and it's a combination of web analytics and social media metrics to allow you to measure 
the effect of your social media channels. Again, Market Sentinel Live Buzz. It's paid for, it's benchmarking, conversation trends, and geographical breakdown of trends. More paid for tools, Nielsen Buzz Metrics and Blog Posts, Blog Pulse, tracks blog trends and conversations, and we've already mentioned it before. Ice Rocket, this is free, and it's real-time real social media search uh, to monitor conversations. So, that's the end of the uh, presentation. Thanks for your time. Um, there's some links below for our social media channels. Hope you've enjoyed it.